Hello guys, and we got some massive news. Coinbase won a massive lawsuit. It's not against the SEC, but it may well have just been against the SEC because this lawsuit was a class action lawsuit that guess what? They were suing Coinbase for selling them unregistered securities. Now, I'm not saying that the SEC put these people up to it. I'm just saying that might have what was going on behind the scenes. So the court's decision hinged significantly on interpreting Coinbase's user agreements, which evolved over time. Now, it wasn't a complete victory, but it is almost a complete victory. So the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit has ruled in favor of Coinbase. And remember, this is not a district court. It is a appeals court. And the only way you can change this is to go up to the Supreme Court. And there's no guarantee that the Supreme Court will even hear such issues. Confirming that secondary sales of cryptocurrencies on the platform do not violate the Securities Exchange Act. And that's exactly what the SEC is suing Coinbase for. Uh, alleging that the currencies it has on its um, platform are securities. Now, this is not the same case, but I think this plays very, very deeply into uh, what the SEC is suing Coinbase for. So it affects a nationwide group of people who traded tokens on Coinbase from October 8th, 2019 to March 1st, 2022, at the heart of the dispute was whether Coinbase's trade traded cryptos met the criteria for securities. And they sued Coinbase under Section 5, 12A1, and 15 of the uh, Securities Act of 1933, as, as well as Section 5, 15A1, and 20A and 29B of the Securities Exchange Act of 1934. Uh, they also presented state law claims related to securities legislation in California, Florida, and New Jersey, representing a nationwide class of individuals. So what happened? Well, the court did determine that there might be potential liability, but not definite liability, under Section 12A1 of the Securities Act for vending unregistered securities. Yet, and this is the key part, it rejected the Plaintiff Securities Exchange Act claims, citing insufficient proof for trans uh, transaction-specific contracts needed for rescission under Section 29. That's right. It's all about the transactions. You need uh, transaction-specific contracts because therefore it'd be a security. There needs to be a contract. And there, if since there wasn't a contract, they rejected the claim. Now, I think this does hurt the SEC case against Coinbase because their arguments are based on kind of the same thing. The plaintiffs view the ruling as a step forward in holding crypto platforms accountable under securities laws, advocating for investor protection in evolving crypto space. Conversely, Coinbase asserts the decision reinforces its position that secondary crypto sales aren't uh, securities transactions. So, I mean, the court basically said secondary sales aren't securities transactions. Primary sales still might be securities transactions, but that protects um, essentially the exchanges for what they do because exchanges are the secondary market. The exchanges generally don't issue their own coins unless you're talking about BNB or CRO. But the main uh, gist of it is that when you're trading these coins on these platforms, they are indeed not securities. Moreover, Coinbase CLO, Chief Legal Officer, expressed gratitude on uh, Twitter, saying that Second Circuit uh, reaffirmed that there is no private liability or secondary trading of digital assets on exchanges like Coinbase under federal security law, emphasizing the significance of contracts. And of course, the SEC has time and time again failed to prove there's any contract, especially between exchanges and the buyer or seller of the security. So uh, that's very good and a big win for the crypto market. And I think it will devastatingly hurt the SEC case against Coinbase. And I am more than certain now that Coinbase is going to win that suit against the SEC. So maybe the SEC can stop harassing everyone. The Ethereum Bitcoin ratio has formed a death cross and that's when the short-term uh, average basically crosses the long-term average or goes below the long-term average. And that generally calls for a drop. Now, that's usually a lagging indicator. But this time, we have to mention it because it also coincides with probably the Ethereum ETF getting rejected in about a month. Now, I'm assuming it'll get rejected because that's all the pundits say. And also, the SEC has made like no real effort to get some of the groundwork going for approving 
an ETF for Ethereum like they did for Bitcoin right before they accepted the ETF. So those that event might actually be, and not really these charts, but that event might actually be what triggers um, Ethereum downwards as we get closer to the date and as more and more people expect the Ethereum ETF to be denied. Now, the feds could pull a fast one on us and accept the ETF, but given Coinbase's ongoing lawsuits and the SEC's ongoing lawsuits against other entities, I find that to be not very likely. So this technical analysis uh, signal for the Ethereum BTC ratio, what that really means is that uh, Ethereum probably not going to perform as well as Coinbase. And I think that is because the Ethereum um, ETF is now uh, expected to be rejected. And unless the SEC surprises us and accepts it, which is kind of unlikely, um, I think that's what's going to happen. So I think people are acting with a respect to their expectations for the ETF right now. So I think it's better for money to be in coin uh, in uh, Bitcoin than Ethereum because that ratio is most likely going to go down once it gets rejected. Now, you know, like if it gets accepted, it will probably boost up just like Bitcoin, but I don't think it'll get accepted until towards the end of this year or maybe even next year because that's kind of like when some of the other deadlines are. And I do actually think that... Um, I do actually think that the SEC really wants to keep Ethereum off the ETF list while they pursue these lawsuits because if they allow Ethereum to be uh, an ETF, then like it kind of almost proves that the underlying asset is not a security, which is kind of like what they've say, been saying about Ethereum for years now. So I think the SEC is going to have an even harder time arguing their lawsuit if they actually allow Ethereum to be considered uh, considered for an ETF and if the ETF passes. So that's why I don't think it's going to happen. But ETFs, Bitcoin ETFs, might be coming to mutual funds um, because the CBOE has filed uh, a petition for, with the SEC to mix mutual funds with ETFs. And that, for the Bitcoin ETF, that could mean billions of dollars. There's just more and more potential money coming into Bitcoin as the year goes on. So CBOE Global Markets has asked the U.S. SEC Commission to approve a rule change that would allow issuers to combine exchange-traded ETF funds and mutual funds. According to a Reuters report on April 4th, CBOE submitted a 19B4 form requesting the green light to add an ETF share class to existing mutual funds. Allowing for a multi-share class fund structure, if approved, the rule could allow issuers to combine uh, and offer similar mutual funds and ETFs within a single investment vehicle, grouping them together. People often buy mutual funds and they might buy more ETFs at that time. And the Bitcoin ETF definitely might be included in the uh, big bag of ETFs. So this could be a pretty big thing for crypto. CBOE filed the 19B4 requesting widespread use of multi-share class fund structures, which would allow mutual funds to add ETF share class equal big deal. Uh, this is from Eric Balchunas. CBOE filling, uh, filing imp because it adds to uh, uh, adds a clock to this. 240 days. MS Fidelity and DFA have filed as well, but theirs has no timetable. So hopefully this does pass. I'm not really too sure about the technicals and specifics of this, as uh, I don't really generally follow the mutual funds market all that much. And the only ETF I'm really paying attention to is the crypto ETF. I'm not really paying attention to all the other ETFs, but. Sounds like a decent proposal, and it might actually work. The proposed system won't be uh, the first of its kind. Since 2001, the Vanguard Group has patented investment strategy that allowed for a unique share class structure within their ETFs. So it's not completely new. So it won't be like a completely novel concept, which I think does improve the SEC's chances of actually approving it. The structure enabled Vanguard to offer ETFs as a share class of their existing mutual funds, allowing both funds to share the same underlying portfolio. Vanguard's patent on the share class concept expired May of last year, which is why they're filing it right now. So it's a novel concept and it's not only Bitcoin ETFs, it's all ETFs. But since Bitcoin ETFs are like the most popular ETFs that have been debuted in like forever, basically, um, I do think like this definitely stands a chance to uh, boost up more value in the Bitcoin ETFs. And obviously more money inflow into the Bitcoin ETFs is exactly what we want because the more money that comes in, especially that grayscale is, uh, I mean, GBTC is done selling at this point, uh, will boost the market up. And that's possibly billions of more dollars flowing into the Bitcoin ETF and any other crypto ETF that may get approved in the future. So it is kind of a big deal 
if this passes. And since it's not a novel concept, there's a better chance it gets approved. So that's the news for today. Let me know what you think. Like and subscribe, hit that bell notifications button. Thank you and have a nice day.